I'm excited to talk about uh, the idea number eight, which is rather a small business kind. And I'm referring to wild, edible and medicinal mushroom collection. So uh, you can develop a business like this with $100 in your pocket if you really want to. And it's doable and it's really exciting and depends very much on if you really want to do this by yourself or if you want to work with pickers so um it's um if you, if you want to do this by yourself then you have to collect the mushrooms so to get out there in the wild to look for the treasures and um put that those in baskets and then you have to process them uh, you have to check uh, you know you, you have to give a very good quality if you're going to pick that kind of mushrooms they shouldn't be spoiled uh, they shouldn't have any maggot channels in there so they have to look size you know and you can market them as well so if you decide that you want to do this by yourself, then you'll have to uh, pass through these steps. Now, if you want to work with pickers, if you prefer to be the person that uh, doesn't get out there in the woods, um, doesn't really like the rainy weather and all of that, then you can work with some people that are into that and uh, what you do you collect uh, the mushrooms from them you get the mushrooms from them you have to process you have to check those mushrooms for quality but not only for quality uh, in this case i would say that you need that knowledge uh, which refers to correct mushroom identification and this is very serious you have to be certified in that uh, it's not like you just have an idea about which one could be good because every little mistake in this business can cost you a lot so you have to be very careful with that um, if you don't want to have that kind of knowledge then you can hire somebody who has it and it can do that work for you so and then you'll have to market your mushrooms i believe that there's something magical in wild mushrooms um, some people when they hear about mushrooms they think about poisonous mushrooms and uh, they just don't want to hear about them i would say that that's a small percentage maybe not that small I would say like 30% of the people they have an inhibition or their mushroom uh, mushroom phobia but uh, the rest probably like 70% of the people will be very delighted and excited to try some wild uh, flavor rich aromatic wild mushrooms and they will pay a lot uh, depends on the mushroom kind that you want to offer them of course and it's so different you know when you're eating a wild mushroom or when that mushroom it's grown it's uh, there's a difference even in taste and it, and not many mushrooms that are wild and very flavorful can be grown <laughs> so um if you would offer me a an oyster mushroom common oyster mushroom or an amico i would prefer to eat a porcini or a morel or um, a truffle or a, a chanterelle so yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> so 
just in case that you're going to decide that you want to work with pickers then uh, you can have like four pickers or even more you can have 40 pickers if you want and you can assign um, a region or an area where these pickers can collect mushrooms or they can be crowds of pickers in one region and another one and another one so you can actually <laughs> sorry you can actually work with these people and you can visit them from time to time to see um, to collect to get the mushrooms from them and your duty is going to be to process and to market them so you'll actually add your commission to what you get from them and that shouldn't be less than 50 percent uh, what's below 50 percent it's not a business according to my opinion so it's somewhere between 50 100 percent commission but in this case it's not only I'm not talking about one pound of mushrooms can be hundreds of pounds so hundreds of pounds from different kinds of mushrooms so if you just add 50% commission to that then um, you can make a lot of money like that so <coughs> you can sell them fresh or you can sell them dried um, fresh uh, depends on the species that you're going to collect um, let me tell you what what, what uh, you could what, what kind of mushrooms you could uh, ask your pickers to collect for, for you and that depends very much on the region where you are and where do they pick them from um, I would definitely focus on porcini and porcini lookalikes that have similar taste I mean from the same family let's say that you, you decide on lepcinums as well why not so that's a relative of porcini mushrooms um, chanterelles definitely chanterelles they're some of the most amazing mushrooms that are out there in the wild honey mushrooms as well but you have to be careful because honey mushrooms could be misidentified with some other ones so you have to be very careful with those uh, truffles if you're thinking about truffles you need the proper knowledge uh, which comes to that area because in that case you need a dog you have to train a dog uh, or you can purchase a dog like that which is already trained but that's very expensive I can tell you and one more thing be behind the truffle industry there's uh, there's a danger as well <laughs> it's not that easy that you're just getting into the truffle business and then you start to sell and pick truffles and all of that it's way more than that um, it's a truffle mafia if you want so uh, if you decide to go hunting for truffles then you can try uh, Europe you can uh, try Italy France um, along the Adriatic uh, sea coast Croatia Slovenia and that area over there even Spain and black truffles white truffles uh, white truffles are very expensive um, yeah so don't use pigs those are more likely they're going to try to eat your truffles <laughs> while dogs they will hand you the truffle uh, not hand you but give you <laughs> offer you the truffles they won't eat unless the truffles would be a bunch of meat or something so <clears throat> uh, you can try even matsutake black trumpets yellow trumpets 
Um, my talk or chicken of the woods or so on uh, there are so many good mushrooms out there from you from what you can pick and you can also dry them now when you dry some of these mushrooms they concentrate their juices and when you're going to use them like that they can before uh, become very flavorful you don't have to use a lot of mushroom but when you're going to use just a little bit a pinch or two pinches of that mushrooms in a sauce that's uh, going to create a, um, a really cool um, you know flavor complex in that sauce so you have to know exactly how much time to dry them um, you have to use a clean heat source so you can dry them out in the sun if you dry them out in the sun they will also uh, get the vitamin from the sun which is very important for uh, human health because many people are just sitting inside their offices they don't getting uh, they, they're not getting enough D vitamin so true mushrooms you can actually um, get them that uh, additional D vitamin okay um, <clears throat> let's get further so now I'm going to talk about uh, point number two which is the business potential in this case so I'm thinking about morels here and I want to tell you that morels you can sell them for 30 bucks to 40 bucks this would be an optimal price range but there are people out there that they will sell their morels for way more money than that um, <clears throat> now if you're taking your $100 that you want to start this business type with then you can offer a picker like $20 per pound and you can purchase five pounds of morels from that one hundred dollar so when you're going to sell them let's say that you want to sell them with thirty five dollars per pound this is how much you get now minus your hundred dollar that would be your profit seventy five dollars I'm not adding to that taxes and all of that if you want accurate numbers you do your homework and you can calculate exactly but this is uh, just in general how much you would get now you can take this sum here and you can invest it further and then you can develop slowly slowly uh, a bigger business and let's say that on a season for morel mushrooms if you gather this much 500 pounds per season you can make about seven thousand five hundred dollars and this is only for more else let's say that you're focusing on three or four kind of mushrooms more else porcini chanturelles and black trumpets then your sum here it's going to be way higher than what you see here and this depends very much on how lucky your pickers are for more else probably they're not going to be the luckiest or who knows but for porcini you can gather uh, they can gather even more than 500 pounds in a season or for chanterelles so <clears throat> let's see in the second case let's say that you decide to do this by yourself in that case you kind of struggle because uh, you might supply the market with a small amount uh, it's going to depend on your luck if you're lucky enough to find 
a mushroom that you want to find um, yeah that's why this is more considered like you know getting out there in the wild and finding little treasures and you won't be able to uh, have a consistent supply uh, consistent flow mushroom flow for your market especially if you're working with restaurants then <clears throat> it's going to be harder if you're going to do this by yourself but if you're going to work with pickers then that's a different story and I believe that that way actually you can make more cash but you can twist this whole operation and you can do them both you can go by yourself and also you can uh, work with pickers depends um, if you're thinking about dried porcini I can tell you that your cell for five dollars an ounce which is a pretty good price uh, fresh porcini you can sell for one dollar and a half up to two dollars per ounce um, what I want to tell you is that the prices that you see here are not uh, are not some ranges that uh, most people that collect mushrooms will sell some people would sell an ounce of mushrooms for even 10 bucks you know this is just uh, an optimal range what i'm telling you about here but in a uh, wild when it's about wild mushrooms you will see that the prices differ very much some are very high some are lower some are in the middle but they're really uh, there's no consistency in what matters the price um, <coughs> now I've been talking about edible mushrooms of course they have medicinal mushroom uh, value as well many of them but uh, if you decide that you want also to collect medicinal mushrooms like wild reishi like uh, agaricon or Fomitopsis officinalis um, like the red belted polypore uh, Fomitopsis pinicola or uh, turkey tail Trametes versicolor um, let's see well, what else Mesima felinus linteus so or umbrella polypore polyporus umbellatus if you want to collect also medicinal mushrooms you can do that and uh, I will tell you that the price on wild reishi can be up to $60 a pound so this is like three times more somebody would pay three times more for a wild uh, reishi than for a grown reishi so think about that you can make some cash like that as well but you you have to you know in this business you you need to know where the spots are especially if you're going to collect by yourself you have to find those spots and to keep them for yourself because uh, your business depends on those so so let's look a little bit on the <clears throat> investment as I told you you can start this with a hundred dollars in your pocket um, you can go straight to pickers or you can collect by yourself and it's doable now this is going to be suitable for you have as I discussed you have these two options if you prefer to sit in a in an office with a computer and just to calculate and see your 
profits and the price ranges and all of that this could be for you but also you'll have to go out in the field to talk to pickers and you'll have to go um, to do the marketing part as well unless you want to hire a team of marketers for you to do that um, to do that for you so you have to you you have to understand that this can be you if you want to prefer if you want to stay in an office that's fine but if you want to collect those mushrooms by yourself then uh, <clears throat> then you have to love rain you have to like nature a lot you have to be prepared for ticks and uh, any other wild animals out there in the woods and uh, you gotta like you know the effect of that's that satisfaction you know when you're finding those mushrooms in the woods it's it's like finding treasures so if you like that and then i believe that this is for you <laughs> challenges yes there are challenges and i want to tell you that this is a seasonal thing um so depends very much where you want to go to pick your mushrooms in some countries out there uh you can pick mushrooms in the fall or in the summer or in the spring some uh there are other countries like let's say the west coast of the states they kind of uh pretty pretty much they have they have uh, mushrooms all summer long once the collect the season starts then it can get until fall you have a lot of uh, mushrooms out there that you can pick so depends very much where you go to pick those mushrooms if you're thinking about uh, Israel for example let's say that you want to go to Israel and you're an Israeli and you want to pick mushrooms in Israel and you want to sell them around there so in that case you have to collect your mushrooms in the winter because that's the rainy season out there so <coughs> depends shelf life each one of these mushrooms they have their shelf life um, the shelf life of a uh, chanterelle is going to be longer than the shelf life of a porcini the porcini mushrooms actually they spoil very fast so in some cases you have to process them right away in that day uh, otherwise the maggots will eat them all and they will spoil and also when you collect these mushrooms you have to be very careful not to mix them together with some other kinds where you know um, <clears throat> so another challenge is going to be the spoilage as I said the lock because your pickers can be locky or not so you'll have these fluctuations in the amounts that they pick um, and also to offer a consistent supply of mushrooms to your restaurants for example can be a challenge because it's very connected to the lock here and to the season and also to the rain <laughs> if there's no rain there's no mushrooms so it's a kind of tricky type of uh, business in a way but it's it's a nice uh, it has nice challenges i would say bad weather and what the woods bring uh, maggots some of these mushrooms they have maggots um, porcini definitely they have um, if you're going to collect uh, black trumpets you don't have to think about maggots so where you can market I mean you can just 
offer them to your neighbors if you really want to <laughs> and they will buy them from you <laughs> so you can go to the farmers market um, you can go to restaurants you can go to local shops if you want to grow uh, if you want to hunt for medicinal mushrooms then you can go to herb shops and not only that but you can make your own tinctures from them if you want and you can sell them like that success stories i can tell you one thing i know people that they're doing this for a lifetime and some of them they they collect uh their own mushrooms so they don't work with pickers and they sell their mushrooms like that and they are doing real well um and of course there are um business people that got into this they started first to collect and then they started to to work with pickers and they're doing that for 20 years 25 years and they don't want to switch from that and they're doing very well you know so they're happy with the profits they're happy with what they're doing um so yes there are success stories out there now this is not a business type like you know those giants that grow mushrooms out there and they're making a couple of millions per year it's not like that it's a small type of business and depends very much on how big do you want it to be but uh if you decide to get in the truffle business then that can get really big because truffles i believe that it's the most expensive food in the world you know when they're putting a just a little bit of truffle on a burger they can sell that burger for 150 bucks or 200 so yeah but for truffles you you gotta be careful because where's where there is a lot of money then there's also mafia and all of that so <clears throat> yeah this is a very good business idea and if you want to enjoy your walk in the woods and also to have some time for your family and you you pick a philosophy you know like to keep it small and then uh, could be for you <laughs>